This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2631. If you're looking for reasons to be happy, you'll probably find them by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. And I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Friday if you're listening in real time. Welcome to Optimal Living Daily, or OLD, one of a few shows where we read articles to you. And we're gonna get right to our next post as we optimize your life. If you are looking for reasons to be happy, you'll probably find them by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. There are plenty of small, inconsequential realizations in life, like the fact that the FedEx logo contains a subtle arrow in between the orange E and X. It's small and unimportant, but the first time someone mentions it, you wonder why you never noticed it before. In contrast with the inconsequential, There are some realizations that come along and change our life forever. They're not minor, they are significant. They don't just change how we view a particular logo, they change how we view ourselves, they alter our worldview and even how we choose to act within it. For me, one of the most profound realizations I've made over recent years is the understanding that if I'm looking for a reason to be X, I'll probably be able to find it. I found this realization to be true in almost every circumstance. As a result, it contains almost limitless opportunity to change my attitude toward the world around me. To understand the significance of this realization, I'll explain a bit more what I mean. Let me offer a specific example. I found that if someone is looking for a reason to be upset, they will almost certainly find it. Life isn't always fair, and if a person wants to be upset about a circumstance, a relationship, or a current event, they will almost always find a reason to support their desire. If you wanna be upset with your spouse, there are probably a plethora of things you can find that would rationalize that emotion. However, on the opposite side of the spectrum, if that same person started looking for reasons to be happy, they would almost certainly find those as well. There's always something to be grateful for in life. If they began looking for reasons to be thankful over a current circumstance, relationship, or current affair, they're almost always able to find it. The same spouse that could provide opportunity to be upset is probably simultaneously offering opportunity to be happy. This reality extends to almost every possible response toward life. If you're looking for reasons to be scared, you'll find them. If you're looking for reasons to be mad, you'll find them. If you're looking for reasons to be encouraged, you'll find them. If you're looking for reasons to be grateful, you'll find them. If you're looking for reasons to be confident, you'll find them. If you're looking for reasons to be pessimistic about the future, you'll find them. If you're looking for reasons to be optimistic about the future, you'll find them. If you're looking for a reason to be X, you will probably find it. There's a scientific term for this reality. It's called selective attention or attentional control. Selective attention is the act of focusing on something in particular while simultaneously ignoring irrelevant information that is also occurring. At any given moment, our brains are bombarded with sensory information, the car horn, the bird chirping, the newspaper rustling, the whirl of the espresso machine, and the words coming out of our friend's mouth who is sitting across the table from us at the local coffee shop. At almost every moment of the day, because our minds can't possibly process all the information being fed to us by our senses, we subconsciously focus our attention on certain important elements of our environment while other things blend into the background or pass us by completely unnoticed. In the coffee shop example, We choose to focus our attention on our conversation with a friend and allow the other noises to blend into the background, selective attention, and we do it every day. But this truth about selective attention extends beyond noise and sight. It also helps to explain the life-changing realization that we can almost always find reasons to support the attitude we want to keep. The world around us is infinitely complex. Because of that, If you're looking for a reason to be X, you can almost certainly find one, and even two or three or four if you keep looking hard enough. The most significant opportunity this truth provides is the understanding that our response to life is almost always a decision we make and is less a reaction than we often think. If you wake up tomorrow and decide you're going to be bitter and hate life, you will almost certainly find reasons to hate your life. But on the other hand, 
If you wake up tomorrow and decide you're going to be joyful and grateful for the life you live and the day you have been given, you will almost certainly find countless reasons to reinforce your decision. This is the magic of selective attention. It's important to note that just because you made a decision to be happy doesn't mean the bad parts and the unfairness go away. They still exist. It simply means you have decided to selectively place your attention on the things needed to reinforce your decision. It's almost impossible to overestimate how significant this realization is. It has the power to transform our lives and how we view them at any given time. Our attitude is not a response to our present circumstances. It is a decision that we make every single day. The truth is life-changing. Where do you most need it? Do you wanna change how you view your spouse, your job, your family, your financial situation, or the outlook on your life? Choose today to look for reasons to be happy. Because if you're looking for reasons to be happy, you will be sure to find them. There's not a doubt in my mind. You just listened to the post titled, If you're looking for reasons to be happy, you'll probably find them by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Thank you to Joshua, a super kind man who I've had the pleasure of meeting in person and staying in touch with here and there over the years. A little side note, I thought it was funny how he mentioned the FedEx logo having the little hidden arrow in it between the letters E and X and how it was very inconsequential. For me, I first heard about that, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Still to this day, every time I see that logo, I stare at that arrow. So for me, for some reason, it was kind of consequential. It's really weird. Anyway, I thought this was a great continuation from the theme of yesterday's episode. Guest author Christina Lopes on Tiny Buddha's website mentioned how if we're pushing down things like pain, anger, or darkness, the world will likely somehow bring it back to our environment. And then Joshua mentioned something sort of similar but different at the same time, that if we also want to be upset, well, there are plenty of reasons we can be. It's quite easy to feel something if you truly want to feel that way. And he brings up some great examples. Now, does that mean if we're really depressed and don't wanna be, we can just wish to be happy? Maybe not, but certainly there are moments where we're looking for reasons to feel a certain way that aren't helpful and that are in our power to change. It's something to watch out for. So thank you again to Joshua for that reminder. And thank you for being here and following or subscribing to the show. Thank you so much if you've ever shared the show with someone that goes a really long way to keep all of this going. I hope you're having a great Friday if you're listening in real time and I'll see you tomorrow over the weekend where your optimal life awaits.